Hey guys, it's Cameron again, and it has been months since I have made a wrap-up video. So this one is going to be covering all of the books that I read in March, April, May, and June. In those four months, I have read a total of 19 books. The first book I have here is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I already did a full video review of this book, so I will link that down below. You guys can go check it out there. But overall, this book is fantastic. Definitely one of my favorites that I've read so far this year. I also read the first two books in the Animorphs series by K.A. Applegate. The first book is called The Invasion, and the second book is called The Visitor. As a 90s kid, I grew up with the TV show of the series, as well as collecting the toys and playing the games. I read a couple of the books in the series as a kid, but I never really got full into it, so I'm doing that now. These first two books are awesome. They're so cheesy and fun, and I just love them. Next up is Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen. Again, one of my favorite books that I've read so far this year. I did a full video review of this, so I will link that down below as well so you can see my thoughts more in depth. I also read the sequel to Garden Spells, which is called First Frost. I did a full video review of this as well, back to back with Garden Spells. Another book that I read was The Mistress of Spices by that author. Can't pronounce her name and I'm not going to try. This is a very interesting book. It's very different from a lot of things that I've read before. It is a magical realism kind of tale about a woman named Tilo who is basically a witch, but her magical powers involve spices. She is, as the title says, a mistress of spices. She's basically a young woman who has taken on the body of this older woman. She's given up all of her freedom and designated her entire life to using these spices to help other people. She owns this tiny little shop in LA that she works out of and she isn't allowed to leave this shop. Like I said, all her freedom is gone. It is all about these spices. And then a man comes into her store and the course of everything changes. And it's just a very beautiful, really haunting story. Ever since I read this book, I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. Here I have the first three books in the Magic Treehouse series. The first book is called Dinosaurs Before Dark. The second book is The Night at Dawn, and then the third book is Mummies in the Morning. I remember when I was a little kid, my mom used to read these books to me, and I was so engrossed in them. She would do the voices of all the characters, and we both really got into it. Just recently, I had a job where I was tutoring these two young children, so I decided to bring these books along and read these to them, and it was a great experience getting to revisit these books and read them to kids the way that my mom used to read to me. And the next one I have here is book 42 in the Goosebumps series. This is called Egg Monsters from Mars. I read this to celebrate Easter because I'm weird like that. I had never read this particular Goosebump book when I was a kid, but I always loved the cover, so I decided to finally give it a shot and definitely was not my favorite Goosebump book. And the twist ending was terrible. I mean, every Goosebump book ends with a twist ending, so I knew it was coming, but it was really bad. It was, it felt like the entire book was leading up to this really lame punchline. So, didn't care for this one so much, but it was still fun. I think I wound up giving this two stars. Okay, oh my gosh, this book is definitely, again, one of my favorite books that I've read so far this year. That is Alistair Grimm's Auditorium by Gregory Finero. I did a full video review of this book and I will post it down below. Definitely go and watch that. You'll see all my views of this book and I just seriously read this book, please. I also read the first graphic novel in the saga series. It's not quite as epic as I thought it would be, but it was really fun and hilarious, honestly. It reminded me a lot of the Guardians of the Galaxy movie and the fact that it is sci-fi, but it's also really funny. Gosh, there's another book that was one of my favorites that I've read so far this year, and that is The Dead House by Don Kurtikich. The author blessed me with this beautiful art copy, so I was able to read it early. Definitely give this a read when it comes out on September 15th. And the very last book that I read is the first book in the Scary Tales series by James Preller. This one is called Home Sweet Horror. This is aimed at much younger readers, and I thought it was a cute, fun little read. It had some great illustrations. The story is a bit weak. It had a lot of paranormal events that didn't really tie together. I felt like if they tied together a little bit better, the story would have been a lot stronger. Overall, it's just written to be this fun, spooky little book for kids. So 
I really enjoyed it and I will definitely be reading the other books in the series. So those are the 19 books that I have read in these last four months. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs> And I am back because I forgot about a few books that I checked out from the library that I don't have on me. The first one is The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Of course, this is a classic kind of self-help book. I've also heard sermons and speeches on this book before, and I thought it was a really great book. It's very informative. There are also some parts that I felt were a bit silly in terms of how the author kind of talked about these five love languages as if they were actual true languages and not mostly categories that he made up to fit everything in. But not getting into that, I thought it was a really good book and I think it would be very helpful to a lot of couples. And I also read a couple books about the Mothman. I read Mothman the Unsolved Mystery, as well as a book just called Mothman. These were children's picture books that were very, very vague. All the information in these books were just kind of common knowledge. Anybody who has any interest in the Mothman at all would know all of this information already. I'm very interested in the Mothman as well as all of these other kind of urban legends. In fact, I'm writing a book that relies very heavily on the Mothman and other urban legends that are in our culture. So whenever I find a book about one of these creatures, I always pick it up and give it a read. There aren't very many great books about the Mothman. There are a couple out there, but for the most part, we're left with these just kind of fun kids books. And that's really all they are. They're just fun. I also read Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. It was nowhere near as good as Gone Girl. By any means, I wound up giving it only two stars. I just wasn't interested. The story was very dry and flat. The characters, while messed up, weren't as interesting as they were in Gone Girl. I haven't read Dark Places yet. I hope it'll be a lot more interesting, but I'll have to see when I read it. And then lastly, I read After Last Call by Daryl Lynn Anderson as an ebook. I have just posted a review of this book. I'll leave the link to that down below so you can go check it out. I really enjoyed it. I give it four stars. Okay, so that's all for this video now. I promise I won't come back. Goodbye.